In this section, we'll be looking at VBA control structures. Control structures allow you to group multiple lines of code in useful ways. And the two main types of control structure are conditionals and loops. Conditionals allow you to execute several lines of code based on the results of logical tests. Loops allow you to carry out multiple lines of code repeatedly and they're very useful for processing multiple objects. So for example, every file in a folder or every worksheet in a workbook. To get the ball rolling in this section, let's start by having a look at if statements. So in 03 VBA control statements, let's open up one if statements. And then let's go into the Visual Basic Editor. Here you'll find we've got a single module, M if statements, and inside it is a macro that we've seen a couple of times, which asks the user to supply criteria and then uses that criteria to filter some data and copy it to another workbook. So the thing we want to do here to practice using if is to make our code run both on Windows and on Macintosh versions of Excel. At the moment it will only run on Windows machines and that's because the Mac operating system doesn't recognize backslashes in file paths. Instead it uses colon as the separator. So if we want this to run both on Mac and Windows we'll need to ensure that we check to see the version and then use a file path which is appropriate for that operating system. So since we've used a constant to tag on the end of the file path, we obviously can't have code which tries to change that value. So what we'll do instead is to create two constants. One for Windows, which is the one we've already got, and then one for Mac. So I'm just going to select this line, hold down my control key and drag the line to copy it. And then let's rename the copy SDR source Mac or underscore Mac for readability. And then we'll change this to a format that the Mac will understand. So we simply put colon instead of backslash. So now when we come to open the source workbook and we build our file path, instead of just tagging on STR source, we'll need to test to see which operating system is being used and either tag on STR source or STR source Mac. So to make this line conditional, let's wrap it inside an if statement. And I'm just going to tab the line in, just uh, press the tab key to move it in, just for readability. So the structure of an if statement is if test then and test is any logical test in other words one which can only evaluate to true or false then this line will be executed if the test is true we then have the keyword else and then another line which executes if the test is false so it's obviously going to be very similar so I'll just control drag to copy that line and to close the if statement we have to use end if. So on a simple if statement those are the four keywords. So we've got if, then, else and end if. So let's say we're going to test to see whether the operating system is Mac. So clearly if it is Mac we will want SDR source Mac instead of SDR source. So I'll just replace that with SDR source Mac. So now we need to come up with a test which verifies that the user is using Macintosh. And to do the test, I'm going to use application.operatingSystem. This is a property of the application object which returns a string. The string doesn't consist purely of Windows or Macintosh, but it will start with either Windows or Macintosh. So my test is simply going to be does application.operatingSystem start with the word Macintosh. To 
test whether it starts with the word, I'm going to use the left function, which you've probably come across in Excel formulas. As usual, I'm going to write it longhand, so VBA, and it's in the strings class dot left. When you open parentheses after typing a function name, normally Excel will display a tooltip showing you the names of the parameters and the order in which they go. Um, I think it's because the word then follows the open parentheses. So if I just close my parentheses and then move back and then let's just put the opening parentheses back in, uh, you can see now it displays the two parameters. And again I'm going to go into overkill mode and actually put the named parameters. So first of all string colon equals and this is where I'll need my application dot operating system. This is the string that I'll be operating on and checking to see whether it starts with Macintosh. So application dot operating system comma and then the second is the length or number of characters that you want to extract starting from the length. So length of course is going to be the number of characters in the word Macintosh, which is nine. Okay, so what I want to say is if all of that is Macintosh. So now I simply type equals Macintosh. And of course, being text, it has to go in double quotes. So that's the first workbook, the source workbook. And we've ensured that SDR path will contain the appropriate constant for the operating system in use. So now we can simply copy that uh, if statement and use it for the target workbook which we open down here. And again I'm just going to wrap this line inside our if statement. So the test will be exactly the same. I'll just paste that in. And then here we would have our else then I can copy the line and close the end if. So because we're testing to see whether it's a Macintosh, this is the one that we'll need to change. So we need to change the style of that to the style of a Macintosh file path. And we do that by putting colon in these two positions. So that's it. So we've ensured that when we're attempting to open a workbook, we are building a file path which the operating system can understand. So now we can just transfer this code onto a Macintosh and check that it runs. So I'll save it and then move across to a Mac. So let's first of all have a look at the original before we made our changes. So in this version you can see we only have str source as our constant and we're using backslashes in the file path. So of course when we come down to open our source workbook, because we're tagging on str source, which is the Windows file path, it's going to break. So when we click on run, I'll just change the criteria to Kamindu. and immediately it chokes. You can see it starts with a file path that has colons, but then we're trying to tag on str source, which is our constant that has these backslashes, and it's the backslashes that uh, are causing it to choke. So if I click on debug, it highlights the problem line, and we can see that uh, it's str source and those backslashes basically that uh, are causing the problem. Now let's look at the finished version. So on this version we've got our two constants, the Windows version which uses backslash, then we've got the Mac version which uses the colon character which is what the operating system demands. Then when we come to open our source workbook we're doing our test to see whether the operating system is Mac and we use an SDR source Mac if it is and SDR source Mac if it isn't. Then for the target workbook, 
you can see that we're doing the same test. We're using the colon version for Mac and the backslash version for Windows. So let's now run. And again, I'm going to change the criteria to Kamindu. But this time, it opens up the sales workbook, does the filtering, and copies the data, and our operation completes successfully. So let's just go across to Excel, and here's our Kamindu workbook and we've got all the Kamindu data and the file, the worksheet rather, is called Kamindu as well. So this is an example of using the simple if statement where you're catering basically for two possible outcomes. If the test is true, you take one route and if the test is false, you take another. In the next video, we'll move on to look at the if-else-if version of the if statement, which allows you to cater for more possible outcomes.